Hi there, welcome to the White Boat Studio again here in sunny, well grey Sozopol today in Bulgaria. Um, I thought I'd do this uh, a more detailed tutorial on uh, the pen and ink techniques that I use. Um, these were some that I used to do in a previous life and these are with rapidograph pens and each one of these drawings which is about full size I think that one, no A4 uh, took me about a hundred hours and uh, it was not very pleasurable. Um, when I was in Asia I uh, discovered that I couldn't use watercolours for plein air painting because it was just too hot and the paint used to dry as soon as it came off the brush. So I came up with this technique having visited a shop in Bangkok <coughs> and bought myself some Lamy pens. For those that are not um, au fait with them, this is Lamy ink, I don't know if you can read that, L-A-M-Y. So this is the ink which dries to a lovely colour, kind of slightly green. Um, I use it, after, so I refill my pens straight from this bottle and <clears throat> if you buy a Lamy pen, I've just had a look on Amazon and they're about £15 and they come like this, There's, I've got three sizes of nibs, fine, medium and, uh, and a broad one. And if you buy them, I would suggest that you don't have the ink cartridges in them, but buy one of these, which is a fillable, uh, refillable uh, cartridge, and you just wind this up in the ink and then give it a wipe. Um, so I've got three pens. <clears throat> I also have um, a Lamy pen, propelling pencil, which is, these are all German and the fabulous quality. And I have a sharpener for the special wide lead which is a 4B lead and I have three of these water brushes and they're in different sizes as well there's a, a broad one, a medium one and a fine one and these are just filled with plain water as you can see I've just filled them up and washed them out so we're going to use those today um, this is a tutorial especially for Kerry and Jeanette <coughs> who commented when I posted my sketches on my Facebook page so this is especially for you um, the one that I'm going to do today is based on this scene that I drew in about I think I did about 15 minutes um, 15 minutes 20 minutes <clears throat> plein air and then I finished it off uh, when I got back to the studio I used pen and water brushes to get all these tonal variations and I'm going to copy this onto this side so you can see exactly how I work. Uh, generally speaking, I don't take this with me when I'm travelling because it's it's weak, lamy ink, and I use this for the skies just with a brush, and it's it's very watery, as you can see. But it's way too risky to travel on an aeroplane with, <laughs> with that. So I tend to do the skies when I get back. <clears throat> These are some of the sketches that I've done with this, and as you can see... There's all sorts of stuff in here that I've done on my travels in Bulgaria and in Greece and uh, yeah so they're all done with the same technique. Occasionally what I do is I also use maybe a white pen or some white gouache. The label's fallen off that one. So I use gouache occasionally if I want to add some highlights. So I'm going to run through the details of exactly how I would approach this. I've posted this photograph on my Facebook page uh, for anybody that wants to have a go uh, and paint along or look at this video on on YouTube um, <clears throat> so I'll just pause and I'll just prep and then I'll be back so I don't know if I just mentioned um, that these Lamy pens are about 15 pounds on Amazon the one that I use is one called Safari I don't know why this one has no ink it has a little window through there as well you can you can check but I'm not going to use that today or maybe I should fill it up before I start so these are fine medium <clears throat> there's a fine nib a medium nib and a broad nib there and I'll be using a couple of these today um, so let's make a start so I just thought I'd take the opportunity as my broad uh, nib is running out of ink I may as well show you how to fill these uh, this was the original ink, which is a small bottle, 
and this came from Bangkok and um, it turned more green than the recent ink so I think they must have changed the formula. So this is what the new bottle looks like which is bigger and it comes with this kind of tissue as you can see I, I just took the top of it and got covered in ink but it comes with this tissue so if you don't happen to have any you can actually block the nib on that. So I'll just fill this up <coughs> if you can see this. So this is my broad nib I think, yes it is. So this is my broad nib and as you can see it's it's empty. You get a little window through there. Where are we? There we are. And all you do is put the plunger all the way down to the bottom. So you turn it anti-clockwise. Drop it into the ink and then wind it clockwise. There's also a reservoir in the bottom of the ink that collects any debris which is handy and then just wipe your pen on some tissue because you don't want that on your hands <clears throat> okay and then we'll wind the barrel back on you can see now that it's full of ink and you get this little window these are called safari pens and I don't know why I chose them but I did so that that one's full and that's good to go so the first thing we're going to do is just do a little sketch you may notice that on the on the original on this one um, <clears throat> I, I, cut, I take the same amount of care composing these sketches as I do when I'm taking photographs or when I'm doing watercolour painting and basically I wanted there's a uh, this fills with water this basin when the tide comes in but there's a a small stream that fills it up in the bottom of here and I wanted to get the reflection of the of the boat just here um, so basically these ropes that are tying these boats down to stop them floating away um, the eye comes here and then follows this up and I wanted the highest contrast so the counter change to be both here on the boat the reflection here and this side of the house which is in is in shadow so you can see I've kept a light area of the drawing here um, against the dark part and I've put the dark part of the trees in the background against the light part here and these are the things that give you the centre of interest so um, it's not an accident you know so I'm going to start with the Lamy pencil and I'm just drawing the basics of this so I want the boat maybe somewhere in the middle I'm going to sketch this quite lightly but I've put the photograph on on uh, my Facebook page so if you want to do this you can it's important to get this bank that comes around here reflection in the water it disappears here it carries on over here there's a it was strange this boat because it's slightly on an angle where it's sat in the mud but the actual um, cabin part of it is all offset which didn't look right to me so I kind of used a bit of artistic license some windows and a mast uh, this was all trees it's important to try and get these random painting nature is always the most difficult thing and then the house in the background let's put the boat in here so we'll have the <coughs> I'll draw this a bit flatter because when I when I looked at my um, my pen and ink that I did on site, it, the perspective was not quite right. So we'll just have another go at that. I'll leave the lines to do with pen. Want the reflections in the water here, and then finally the house. I'll move that slightly into the middle, and then we've got the house that's set up on a mud bank just up here. So we've got this small extension on the side of it. So the direction of the light is coming from the left on this one and I'll do it the same way on this one. So I'll just put an arrow in the top corner to remind me. Although I've got a drawing here. Quite unusual. This sketchbook's going to look very strange with, with um, two identical drawings in it but anyway such is life. We'll draw the gable end of the house. 
even if a house is straight I tend to use kind of curvy lines on the roof because it makes it look older as if the something's collapsed on inside the roof there's a small building here a couple more chimneys here <clears throat> and that's about it uh, yeah I can put the windows on later so that's my sketch that's all there is to it we've got a shape for a rowing boat the shape for the bigger boat and also the house and some trees in the background so let's make a start I usually do the um, sky last um, but if you have let's say for instance this one which is Conway in Wales where I went recently you can see that there's some spreading of the ink just here and that's because I did the I did this um, later and I also did this which is the kind of flagpole uh, sorry the the mast on the boat if you if you do happen to touch it and uh, when you do the sky it'll smudge because even though the ink is permanent it still moves sometime later so let's get back to this so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the darkest areas of the painting so that's going to be this gable end here and the dark side of this boat here and the dark side of this boat here so I'll zoom in on that and then you can get a closer look at that I'm going there mine, can you zoom in? Oh Christ, I'm still recording. Just a quick word about the uh, type of sketchbook that you use. Uh, this is one that I think I bought from Lidl. And as you can see, if you use a lot of dark colour on it, it actually comes through on the pages at the back. Um, so I abandoned that one after I'd finished it. But the one that I'm using today is a uh, one called Hannon Mule nostalgia sketchbook and it's 90 90 pounds 190 grams and this is lovely too it's actually especially for uh, pen and ink I think yeah fine grain for defined pen control and delicate hatching won't be doing any of that today so what I'm going to do is I'm going to ink these in solidly with my with my big pen so let's uh, do that so so these are going to be the darkest darks in the painting together with this area here, this area below here. So I'm just blocking this in. You can leave a few gaps because then it looks like there's some details of stones. And then just to spread that around so it doesn't look quite so dense I'm using the fine water brush now and I'm just dragging that along the course of those stones. So when I paint I just think of light and dark, nothing other than that and a few little dots and dashes. So that's the house done. Now we'll do the dark side of the boat. So it's got a, I'm going to call it a rubbing strip along the top edge. And then we'll do it in the direction of the planks. We'll have a really dark line down here, which will be solid. And this front area, <coughs> front area will have a shadow down it. So I'm just drawing some planks, just roughly. You can see how quick it is to do this technique. And I'm just going to use my medium, medium water brush, and I'm just going to spread these around a bit. Oops, a bit too much there. I always stand by with a bit of tissue and just dry my brush off dab a few bits there we'll have a grounding line along the bottom and we'll drag some of this so it looks like the shadow of the boat now there's two ways of doing this you can either add the pink the ink pink the ink first or you can actually put the water on but it tends to be a bit more random if you put water on um, the ink stays wet for a few minutes so um, it will always be disturbed um, if you add water to it later um, but it is a permanent ink so it's uh, it gives you those really nice darks but you can also this one has still got lots of water on it and you can see if I now add some more ink to it 
We'll get some more details. The blob wasn't intentional. And we'll do this, which would be in shadow. And if I want to indicate a shadow, just rub it underneath with a water brush. <clears throat> On the original drawing of this boat, I actually made the light side here a little bit dark so I'm going to correct that on this version and now I'm just going to I'll use my finer pen for this this is the light side of this boat so I'm just going to add an indication of these planks and I could add some shadow line to that and I may just do that and there would be a painted area underneath here I quite like that just as it is and on here there's a boy which would be have a doubt there there's also a boy on this side <coughs> and then let's put some of these ropes in this one which would also have a shadow so fine water brush and then we'll have this shadow you can actually steal ink from an area that you've already put on so for instance on this boy I'm just touching that with a water brush and now I can actually use that borrowed ink to, to kind of indicate the sh reflection in the water so you can st see now that we're starting to get this reflection let's have that boy about there and maybe there would be a, an indication of some shadow from the rope and now let's do <coughs> Going back to the big pen, and this is going to be drawn really loosely. I'm going to use my medium water brush for this, and we're just going to get some shadow. So all I'm doing is we're just running some of that ink. To the right hand side. It's important that your shadows are fairly consistent and we'll have a lighter side to the boat just here. Go back to my fine and let's have some shadow on the inside of this. The sun's coming from the left hand side so under here would be in shadow so I'm just going to indicate a little bit of that there. <clears throat> and then back to my fine pen. It's still wet and I'll indicate some seats, maybe the front there, maybe a transom on the boat, something inside the boat, maybe some oars. And then a little bit more detail just to make it a bit more interesting. So all the time thinking about where the light and the shadows are. So it starts to uh, come alive. Let's have some, let's have this one anchored. Maybe not on here. Now, this area is in sunlight, so this area here of the bank, as you can see from my original, um, has got hardly any detail in it. Um, so, the dark area is actually the, the area that's in shadow here, so let's do that one now. It's just a question of getting some ink on as roughly as you can, kind of indicating some mush banks. You can see how fast this technique is. So you can really you can really get some ink on here fast, which if you're working in a hot country, which is 
what I usually do. You can really get that on and let's have some reflections in the water. Everywhere has a dark area, I'm copying it up above just to give some indication of the shadow and just run a brush underneath that. And now we've got this bank. Your pen will also pick up some um, ink. So this in the in the nib of this water brush, as you can see, has got a little bit of colour in it. You can nick some from there. Let's have some water. And the water just goes around that corner. <clears throat> we've got a few details here. It's really fast to produce something very quickly. Um, that will make it easy for you to go back into the studio and, uh, and do some work. I'm just going to use my brush on its side just to indicate some mud banks. This scene is actually called a place called Red Wharf Bay that some friends of ours took us to see. Let's have a little bit of shadow. Might be some there. This is, <clears throat> and it's in on Anglesey in Wales. Had a lovely pub lunch there as well. Right, so I'm going to block this boat in now and also the dark side of this and some chimneys. So I'll just pause the video and I'll come back to that once I've done it. <clears throat> okay, so I've blocked this side of the boat in <clears throat> and also uh, added some more detail onto this boat. Uh, you can see just here that if there's an overhanging roof, if you just wipe a line down it you start to get shadows on what look, looks like glass and you might end up with a little bit down here and it starts to look a bit more realistic. Uh, just a tip, if you have, a hove, have, have an overhanging roof, that was difficult to say, like this one for instance, roofs are usually bigger than the buildings, if you just add a line underneath it they always give you a convincing looking building. I'll demonstrate it on this one, on this roof just here. So using my big pen, just give myself a double line there. And the, the, the shadow is usually consistent with the overhang of the roof. So all I'm going to do is just wet that area so it softens the edge. And I'll add some windows and a couple of doors and these are right up into this roof area must be a lovely cottage to live in unless there's floods and then on, I'm just going to turn my uh, book to the side because I want to get some detail on these roof tiles this is the sunny side of the roof so I won't be touching this with a water brush. This is just going to be as it appears in the finished drawing. And you can see now it looks like a fairly convincing house. Let's have a door in here as well. There is actually a retaining wall in front of here but fences and things so let's just indicate that just with a quick few lines. There might be a gate here or something. Really, it doesn't matter, just get some something on there. <clears throat> and then just soften that with a brush, just in places. We'll just indicate lots of stuff happening. Might be a shadow on this side of the cast from the house onto that building. Let's have an indication of a fence. As you can see, I'm just doing it slightly different from the original. There's also a winch on the back of this boat. Um, there might be a shadow just on this roof from this chimney. So let's have that indicated there. And maybe a little few details underneath for things like windowsills. Let's have a bit of detail. I'm just using the ink that's on the brush just to give me a little bit of texture on this. Maybe a little bit on the roof as well. Just to look like the roof tiles. So you can see now we're progressing quite nicely. I'm concentrating on the focal, the focal areas of this painting. One of the most important things on the original was um, this area just here. 
where the darkest area contrasts with the lightest area. So I'm going to let this all dry before I touch that because if this is still wet and I touch it with pen it's all going to bleed into there. So I'll just carry on with this area over here. I'll have an indication of some fences. This is all kind of shrubbery and overgrown stuff here. I'm just going to give myself some stuff and it's just basically scratchy lines going upwards and then when I touch that with a water brush I'm going to use the brush on its side just give it a little squeeze and that'll give you all those kind of mid-tones I'll carry that onto the boat have something here that looks like bushes I've been really careful not to touch the white area of this uh, of the boat so now I'm just going to go underneath give myself indications of these mud banks obviously where the tide comes in and I think while I'm at that I'll just use the water that's on the brush just give myself an indication of this the lighter area of this bank and I'm just squeezing the brush now you can see how it's bleeding there it's lovely I'm just going to steal a bit of pink from there just to give, these are the lighter tones of this of this bank just needs something in there <clears throat> and now this area here near the house should have dried so this is going to be one of the darkest areas in my painting so I don't actually indicate the light side the, the, if you like, you're, I'm, I'm going to reverse draw around this house so I'll start with a couple of big boughs for the tree it's important that they don't come from behind a chimney or they, don't, or they look exactly the same it's very difficult to uh... and now I'm going to touch that with a water brush and I'm thinking about the dark side of these uh, trees now so the light's coming from the left so they would be darker on this side so I'm just using kind of dry brush technique just to spread some of that ink around this isn't a finished article yet. Just trying to get those to look like distant twigs and branches right at the tops of the trees. So it's important that those are different. Let's have, see if we can spread some of this ink around. Okay, now this is still wet, so I'm going to go in with my big pen and I'm going to reverse draw around this chimney and around the roof you kind of want an, an area not to appear like a halo can you see how it's looking like a halo around the house so I've got to concentrate on this area here and I'm going to make this almost solid black and you'll see how that contrasts against that roof so the roof stands out against the dark background. Same with this wall. I want this to be the light, one of the lightest areas of the drawing. Really accurate against that wall. And now as we move away into the light side, just using a kind of quick squiggly motion. And then when I touch that with water, there's quite a lot of ink coming off this this pen so now I'm just going to soften some of that to give me some of these mid-tones as we approach the light side of this house so I'm covering most of that up and leave a few patches of light but you can see now how the how the house really jumps off the page again I'm painting very carefully around this chimney And now we're moving to an area where I want, the, because of the dark wall here, I actually want this to be lighter on this side. So now I'm just using a dabbing motion with my wet brush. I'm stealing bits of ink from anywhere I can. But I want that area to be quite light. 
although it could be quite dark against that roof. Let's have some roof tiles on there. <clears throat> Let's have that chimney a bit finer. And then we'll have some more squiggly branches. Really anything goes. <laughs> so why are you watching this video? <laughs> and some more trees there. The important thing about drawing anything is nature is if you see a pattern emerging, do something differently. On the original drawing here, I actually made this area light, but I didn't make this dark. So I'm going to compensate for that now. And I'm going to put a really dark tree area in behind there as if it's shrubbery. And I'm going to spread that around, but being really careful to reverse draw around this boat. But I don't want it to go right up to that roof, otherwise we'll have a lining issue. A lining up issue. So again, I'm just smudging some of that ink just so that we get some lost and found edges. You'll notice on this area of the drawing here, where are we? Uh, on this area of the drawing here, there's a mast sticking up there. I'm not drawing that mast in until I've done the background because if I do, this will smudge. So now I'm just concentrating on these trees, changing the direction of a brush. I want them to be well-defined around the house and the boat, but less defined over here you can see this is one of the least important areas of the painting so I'm going to go in that and I can just use a different technique this time it's slightly moist I'm just going to use some dotty techniques to look like leaves and last year's growth it was actually spring when we went to Wales few more up here and if you leave them hard you end up with a hard edge if you soften with the brush you end up with a soft edge and um, there would be a highlight on the top of the boat here so I'm just going to be really careful about these trees make sure that nothing comes from behind that I want this to be quite dark against this so I'm using a horizontal brush stroke and again, just reverse painting around the roof of that boat so that it looks like the sun's catching it. You, so you can see the speed there's. You're able to draw and capture these scenes. So if you work in, in, a, in a warm country, it's, um, it makes it so much faster. Just going to give myself some dotty bits. I've done a bit more detail on here than I did in the in the original and I'll soften some of those painting nature is uh, and getting things random is one of the most difficult things to do particularly if you're a beginner <clears throat> so now I'm against the light side of the boat so I don't want that to be too dark again looking for contrast and counter change as Ron Ranson used to call it The important thing when you're doing these is to use upward strokes for the uh, for your trees and then naturally your, your brush or your pen lifts off so it gets thinner as it goes to the top. We'll have a few more well-defined trees, trying to make sure that they're not all the same. Have a thicker one there, a bit of a scratchy thing going on. A bigger brush for this. So I'm using my big water brush and I want to soften a lot of these edges. Again, upward brush strokes, some dry brush happening there. And just softening it so it looks like there's depth in these trees. And while that's still wet, 
could use a toothbrush and splash it with ink but it's going to go all over the place if you do and you can see if you touch the pen on a dry area you get a hard edge if you touch it on a, a wet area you get a, a soft edge I just want to break some of these up and I think that will do for the trees so as you can see we're getting there okay I'll just let that dry and then come back to it Okay, so now as you can see, I'll just zoom out so you can see the two side by side. And you can see we've captured that. The final things to do are the sky, which I'll do next. I've also standing by, as, you, as, you, as I mentioned, I haven't done the mast. Uh, you can put some more tree boughs in here, maybe strengthen the shadows. So this is where you really define things. The other thing that may have happened, which has happened with me, is that in my uh, haste I lost a little bit of this roof shape just here so just using some white gouache you can get these areas back and the ink mixed with this gouache gives you a lovely opaque look so I might have some details on these windows maybe a highlight or two that we lost maybe side of these boys and that's just with a little brush <clears throat> and then we'll have the a few more sharpened details on here so we'll have this aerial on top of the boat let's have some more pointy things coming out of the, the boat because they usually have a few Uh, might strengthen the shadow just by dragging this down and if it's water a little swoosh will break those lines up and I'm going to do the sky just get rid of that gosh so the first thing I'll do is just rub out the arrow in the sky, which is a bit of a giveaway. And now just using a fairly big brush, let's have a look, see what we've got. I'll use this one. You can do two things. You can either, so this is the weak lamy ink, which is here. And it's very watery. You can either wet the sky first um, and again I'm looking for a dark sky over this side as you can see from the original. The dark sky is against the light side of the trees. The light sky is against the darkest part of the painting. So if I want a dark sky I'll uh, wet my brush, dry it off into the weak lamy ink which is here and then just quickly Give yourself a sky around those trees. Tend to use an angle and then leave a few white gaps. And then over this side where I don't want much, I'm going to wet that first. So literally it's a wet into wet technique. And I'm using just the ink that's actually on the brush now that I've used from this area. Spread a bit over there. And there you have it. And that's almost complete. May have another couple of lines running off. Where we've lost these lines, we can get those back. Let's have another one from here. We'll have an anchor or a boy on the end of this one. And then you can also use a little bit of the weak lamy ink, say on the water or on the land. Let's have this bank defined a little bit more. A 
bit more water. And then the water just stands out a little bit more. And I think that's about there. So that one's for Kerry and for who else was it? Jeanette, I think. Just reading your messages on Facebook now. Yep, yeah, Jeanette. Um, so, hope you enjoyed that. Hope you found that useful. Um, as you saw, it didn't take very long at all to do that. Maybe 20 minutes in real time and it's done. And so you can record things very quickly just using pen and ink. There's a couple more um, Lamy demonstrations on my YouTube channel. So if you want to like and subscribe or leave any comments if you've got any questions. Uh, thanks very much for watching and uh, there'll be another one soon, but probably on watercolour painting this time. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.